So let me begin uh, with really uh, congratulating to our organizer for making this great event, this great workshop happen. And uh, I'm going to, to speak today about um, our recent uh, paper uh, with my collaborator Thomas. Actually, this is last November paper, a uh, very recent one, and uh, which is about the relation between, between the gauge fields and quantum entanglement. And actually, the, 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 the analysis is pretty general, but I will discuss it in the context of gravity. And uh, before I go to the point, uh, let me spend uh, just one minute uh, about explaining what the Quantum Cosmos Lab is. Actually, my, my, my group recently evolved into Quantum Cosmos Lab, so just let me spend one minute to say what we are currently doing in, 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 in my group. So, I mean, originally we are mostly quantum cosmologists and quantum gravity researchers. We've been working a lot of uh, quantum perturbations theory and also the phenomenology in this context. So that, I would say, was for long our main domain of activity. A couple of years ago, we proposed uh, a new field, a theory approach, I mean, a kind of, um, I would say, um, um, a, a class of field theories characterized by compact phase spaces or nonlinear phase spaces. And this is something we explore a lot currently. This is, I would say, a core activity in my group right now. So like three years ago, I, I, I pushed forward a program of putting quantum gravity of, on quantum computer, actually more specifically loop quantum gravity on quantum computer. So this is something what we are working on right now. This is something I was actually presenting partially during our first QSS meeting in, in Slovakia one year ago. We also explore uh, gravity entanglement duality also with the concept of tensor networks. And there is also more and more activity in my group related to the uh, quantum space technologies, and, and this is more precisely related to the free space quantum communication and how the gravitational effects affect the quantum channels for satellite quantum communication with single quantum. And today, actually, the, 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 the project I'm going to, to discuss as has motivation in these two areas of our activity, namely the Planck uh, scale physical quantum computers and gauge entanglement um, duality. So the first motivation is related to the, as I said, uh, the simulation of Planck scale physics, and this is something what we are already doing since something more than two years now in the context of loop quantum gravity. So for instance, what we do is that we are implementing uh, spin network states uh, using the quantum circuits. This is the circuits we generate a single tetrahedra. This is the, the, the thing that you perhaps remember from Pietro's talk. And we know how to do that. We actually, these are the circuits that we implement on actual quantum computers by IBM. But the problem is, uh, when we try to glue the tetrahedras together. And this is actually related uh, with the problem of uh, finding geometrical states for gravity. And every link in the spin network state is a colonomy, uh, more specifically as a colonomy of SU2 gauge field. And the problem here is how to associate the colonomy with a given quantum state. So this is one motivation for the, pro for the problem and uh, for the project. And the second one is, actually there was almost nothing said here during this workshop on the gravity entanglement um, uh, in the context of ADS-CFD. So basically, what, what, what's this about? I mean, we have some discrete degrees of freedom and condensed matter physicists uh, discover already a couple of years ago that, I mean, an effective way to describing the states of the many body quantum systems is to use tensor networks, which represent actually the quantum state. And it has been found later that this uh, tensor network has geometric interpretation. It is characterized by hyperbolic structure. On the other side, we have spin networks, and in particular, we consider open spin networks in, we have, in which we have open links, and every open link is attached with a single degree of freedom. 
actually the degrees of freedom they, 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 they break the gauge invariance. So this just the picture is very similar. Okay, so uh, one of our uh, objective was to try to understand actually the relation between the two things. And um, this is how the discussion of the project starts up. So as I said, I mean, as you two gauge fields, this is something what we can discuss in very general fashion. But I'm going to discuss here as you two gauge field in the particular implementation, namely in the context of Ashtakar variables, which are the basis for loop quantum gravity. So uh, the crucial is how to how the SU2 symmetry naturally occurs in, in gravity. I mean, this is related with the fact that in 3 plus 1 uh, formulation of gravity, the special metric can be decomposed into the densitized strats. <coughs> and they have internal SO3 symmetry. And thus, these strats uh, are like a generalization of electric fields. And then you can introduce conjugated uh, variable, which is the, the, the gauge connection. And this is the, the, the par which defines the Ashtakar variables. And then, because this gravity can be then the drafter expressed in terms of these variables, it's, it's, it's a theory of constraints. And the symmetry is embedded in the Gauss constraint, which is the first class. And, the, and, the, the, and the, the, the constraints generate the local gauge symmetries, and this is something what you are familiar with and what can be derived from the Gauss constraint, okay? So this is local thing. Then, I mean, in loop quantum gravity, but also in lattice field theories, I mean, the, the, the crucial idea is of the colonomies, which are a functionals of, um, of the gauge connections. So basically, you, get, you take a certain curve in space, and then you integrate your gauge field along this curve from some source point to the target point, which are the endpoints of the curve. So this is, I would say, the classical. But what is important uh, is that under the gauge transformation, the colonomy is transformed in a very special way. Namely, if you just apply the gauge transformation, this one, to this formula, you find that the colonomy transforms at the end points of the, of the curve. So this allows you to very easily construct gauge independent objects, which are just uh, the Wilson loops. So you glue them together, and then you trace it, and this will cancel uh, in the trace. Okay? So this is used in lattice uh, young Miller field theory, but also in loop quantum gravity. Okay? So this is at the classical viewpoint on colonomy. But there is also quantum viewpoint on the colonomy, actually. And let me firstly, before I go to the more general uh, discussion, let me focus on the fundamental representation of SU2. So in case of the fundamental representation, uh, this uh, tau matrices, okay, which are here, are just Pauli matrices. Therefore, the um, the, the, the colonomy is in that case a two by two SU2 matrix, okay? And this two by two matrix, SU2 matrix, is actually an automorphism on C2, which is the space of spinners. And a C2 equipped with, just, with a scalar product is just a Hilbert space. So actually what is this matrix doing is that it's taking an element from the source uh, Hilbert space and it's mapping into the target Hilbert space, okay? So the colonomy from the quantum me me mechanical viewpoint is just taking, just repeat it, just take a state from the source Hilbert space and map it to some new state in the, in the, in the, in the target. In this case of fundamental representations, the source and target are just the Hilbert space of qubits, but then if you consider a general representation, these are two j plus one dimensional spaces, okay? So this is the first important thing to note. And because this is a, this is a map, moreover, this is a unitary map, 
uh, you can decompose the colonomy in the basis of in the basis states of source and targets. So these are basically these are these states, okay? And then you have some matrix elements. These are matrix elements of, of colonomy. You see that this object is belonging to the tensor product of the Hilbert, the, the, the source, Hilbert space, and the dual, because you have a bra here, okay? And then you can have a different actions of this operator, of this map. You can have left-handed or right-handed actions, depending on whether you act on the bra or cats, okay? Acting from the left on hand side. You can also introduce the Hermitian conjugation, and this is convenient to introduce Hermitian conjugation, because if you take the Hermitian conjugation, which is actually introducing at the end the, the star, the complex conjugation to the H i j here, uh, your right-hand side action is from the Hilbert space of source to the Hilbert space of target for cats. Okay. So how it is act? You, I mean, let's let's consider it for the not for the Hermitian conjugation, but for the H. Then you take the state, let's say you take a bra, you act to the left, and then you get uh, a new state, which is a certain superposition of the basis states in the target space. Sure. So, Sorry. Uh, the source and target Hilbert spaces now are just the uh, Hilbert space of the fundamental representation of the C2. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you can generalize it easily. I mean, here, this means that this indices goes from 0 to 1, but in any representation, it just goes from 0 to j, to j plus 1. Yeah. Okay. So then, I mean, basically what uh, this gives you, I and mean, what the map is gives, gives you, is that let's say that you have a basis in the source, and then you have a basis, a given basis in the target. So let's say that, uh, fictitiously, you move this uh, basis to, to the point of target, and then you decompose the, let's say, the one into the basis states of the target. I mean, the source basis state and the source in the, in the, in the, in the Hilbert space, in the basis states of target. And this, this coefficients are just the coefficients of the decomposition. And uh, one um, physical remark here, actually what we are doing here is that we are taking a quantum state and we are moving a quantum state from the source to the target in a gauge field. And actually, what is happening, I mean, the fact that, that these Hilbert spaces are, are different is nothing, I mean, um, nothing strange. This is something what we expect. I mean, in, in case of, let's say, the electromagnetic field, this is just a change of the phase of the particle, of the, of the wave function, when we move it across the electromagnetic field, okay? So this is something, this is a, I would say, the, the, the known piece of physics. But, of course, I, I, I discuss here, I, I mean, I, I, I fix some bases here, but of course the physics is base independent, okay? And we can change the bases both in source and in the target, okay? And let's, let's see what it will tell us, okay? So let's say that we, we change the Hilberts, we change the bases, we rotate it, let's say, in the source, and we rotate it in the target using the US and UT <coughs> unitary operations, okay? So the question we can ask, how this will affect this, the map, the colonomy between the source and the target? And actually, this is the diametric representation of what is happening. So let's say that we have originally a Hilbert space at the source and the target, and then we perform some unitary transformation on the basis states, okay? And then we have some new Hilbert spaces, I mean, which are spanned by the new basis vectors, okay? And we would like to know what is the H prime, the new map, okay? Yes? I mean, you, you can say that this is, I mean, I mean, at the level of spinners, this is a rotation of basis for the spinners, but this is, this is a rotate, this is unitary trans, I mean, if you consider as, as, a, as a quantum state, these are just unitary rotation of the basis. It's not just SRT of the triads? No, no, we are, we are not, uh, at this point, we are at the level of the Hilbert space, it's not, not anymore at the level of the triads, okay? Maybe, is this, is this 
de I mean, actually, the speed connection is contributing to the definition of of uh, of Ashtakar connection. Okay, this is a part of the game, actually. So, so, so uh, in 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 case of the grav in the case of interpretation of A in terms of the gravity, okay, the spin connection is actually entering to the to the definition. I mean, in, in a sense, actually, because actually the, the colonomy can be decomposed into the Wigner matrices, okay? So this is actually a certain rotation of the Wigner matrix under the change of the basis, because it has two indices, okay? So, and then you can play a simple game, okay? You just change the basis at the, defini at the definition. And what you find is that the map transforms, this is the first important observation, the map transforms precisely as a as a, as a colonomy. Okay, so this is first thing to note that uh, sorry, this is exactly what the colonomy does. Is like this. exactly, 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 exactly. I'm just let's say this is I'm 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 just refreshing something. Okay, that, that to make it clear. Okay, that to just to make it clear that colonomy transform in this way, but. But so far, I, I've been talking about the maps between the two Hilbert spaces. And now let me go to the point, OK? We have two Hilbert spaces, which are the source and the target, OK? And we can ask, what are the states, the product states, I mean, the states belonging to the product of these two Hilbert spaces, OK? And in, in general, you can discuss many different possibilities. But let me focus, actually, on on this state, okay, this particular state, and I will uh, try to convince you that there is, uh, I mean, this, 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 this state is pretty interesting, okay, and it can tell, tells us a lot. So what we have actually, in general, we could say that we have some coefficients h, i, j here, okay, but we restrict this coefficients to be uh, a matrix element of s, u, to matrix, okay? So this is this is restrictive on the form of the state, okay? And I will show in a second that actually this restriction leads to the fact that this state is maximally entangled, okay? And this is already no, something which is known in a quantum information community. I found it in the book. Um, but, okay, this was used in quantum information just for the purpose of, I would say, um, parameterization of maximal entangled states, okay? Just some kind of mathematical, um, you know, a convenient way of writing the state, okay? But then uh, the, the, there were two papers by Czech, Lamprus, Saskin, De Boer, and G, who considered this kind of state, and they, uh, they have shown, actually, that this state actually can be used to, de to, to, to define a map between the state, be be between the source and target Hilbert space. And then actually we, we improved the analysis in the paper and we, 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 we introduced the gravitational context and, and thereafter we applied it to the spin networks. And so let me go further. So this is just, I mean, this for you are most quantum um, information scientists, so this is actually something very simple for you. So you, this is just a proof that this is maximal entangled state. So you, you, you just construct a density matrix, you trace over the source and over the, the target in a symmetric way. And what is crucial that because this, um, this, this, uh, this HIJ is our elements of special unitary matrix, this implies that this is a diagonal, that the, the, the reduced density matrix are diagonal. So they maximize the mutual information because the, the total state is pure, okay? So this is just a simple proof of that. So let me now say, I mean, how this anti-linear map looks like, okay? Actually, there was, there was a mistake in the original paper of Che and others, we corrected them, and this is actually a correct way to, to write this map. And um, so basically what you, what, what, what you take is that you, let's say this, this works, this is shown for, for bra belonging to the, to the source dual. 
Hilbert space, you take the state, you perform complex conjugation on the state, and then you map the state on that product state, okay? And then you get this, okay? So this is the action actually, this is the map, which is at the end precisely the action of the colonomy, but introduced by the state, okay? And then you can also perform. I just lost track. What was psi? The, the psi is is uh, the psi is this state. Okay, so you take a state. Yeah, you you you, you fix the state. Okay, and this state is parameterized by this h i j components, which are components of S U two matrix. Okay, and then what you do is that you define this this map. Okay which is a combination of complex conjugation, actually this complex conjugation introduces this anti-linearity, and this state, okay? And then if you project this state onto that state, only the uh, target part remains, and which is precisely the one that you get from the colonomy, okay? So the, the, actually this state is doing the same what the colonomy do, does, and then you can also r try to see what will happen with this expression when you rotate the basis, okay? And you derive this, and this gives you that the transformation rule is also precisely the, the transformation rule for, I mean, for this coefficients of the states, is precisely the transformation rule of gauge uh, of, 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 of colonomy, okay? So based on that, you can conclude that this is actually a colonomy, okay? So, uh, what we can say based on that? Actually, what are the conclusions so far? Let's say that you don't know anything about, uh, let's say, gravity, okay? Or anything about the gauge fields, okay? But you know quantum mechanics very well, okay? And you know uh, maximally entangled states, okay? So you take the quantum, you, you, you take the maximally entangled states, which can always be written in this form. This is for qubits, but then you can easily generalize it to any higher dimensional system. And then you say that Hij, if you, I mean, and this is something what you can always do, you can always say that this psi state defines a map between the source and target. So therefore, in any case, you can say that this Hij transform under the change of basis in this particular way. So in the sense, this was something, I would, maybe this is something trivial, but it was completely un, 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 untrivial for us when we, when we realized about that for the first time, is that for every quantum maximally entangled state, you can introduce actually the notion of colonomy, okay? So, wait a minute, so this is the statement you that for um, any maximally entangled state? For, for, ma for, every, for any maximally entangled state, only for maximally entangled states. State. I can write in terms of coefficients of an SU2 matrix, is that the statement? Yeah. I, wish, I, wish. I, I, I want to one correspondence between maximally entangled states and unitary yeah. matrices. Yeah. Uh, let so me show it uh, just, to better understand it, let me show an example, very simple example, okay? So let's take a single state, okay? Um, so in that case, the colonomy, the, the, the Hij matrix is precisely this matrix, which is just exponentiation of the Pauli matrix, okay? And now, uh, let us consider certain unitary operation at the source and the target, okay? So in general, we have three parameter family of the unitary operation for qubits, okay? But I mean, for simplicity, let us, let us uh, restrict to one parameter family, which are just rotations, okay? But then you can easily generalize it. So let's take u theta, which, is, which are just rotations, and uh, let's fix that, that theta at the source is theta s and theta at the target is theta uh, t, okay? So then, because of this transformation property of, uh, 
sorry, of this matrix element, okay, which can always be introduced for the maximally entangled state, you can find um, using these exponentiations that actually your colonomy, your age, egg, egg, with five minutes, okay, which is exponent of the minus i pi over two sigma y, transform in this way. And this, I mean, assuming that there is a continuous change of theta between the source and target, is just, uh, sorry, is just, can be written as, 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 as an integral of the derivative of theta. So we, exp so we can conclude based on, based on that, okay, that, that H can be written as a certain integral of something, okay, and where the integrand of this integral transforms under the change of basis just by minus I derivative of theta. But this is nothing uh, else than just the gauge transformation. So if you would uh, take this U, this particular U, and the plug in into let me come back to the original expression, to this. This differentiation would just give you the differentiation with respect to theta. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the expression. Of course, I restricted here to, you, uh, to, to the one parameter fam family of, of transformation for simplicity. Therefore, it looks like this is a U1 gauge transformation, okay? But this is just a remnant of SU2 uh, constrained to this one pam parameter family. So, so what we claim, claim in the paper is that starting from uh, actually consideration of maximally entangled state, you can abstract that they might be something as a gauge, like, like a gauge field, which transform in this particular form. And this transformation is reflecting actually the change of the basis, okay? So, uh, how to understand this, okay? So uh, let's consider that we have a discrete system of, let's say, spins, let's say spin chain, okay? And then our theory is described by maximally entangled pairs. Like, let's say, this one with some possible projections. This is like, a, let's say, a PEPS um, a tensor network or something. But let's say, but what is crucial that we have maximally entangled pairs, okay? So in case you have maximally entangled pairs, you can say that because your physics, your measurements, okay, of your, I don't know, of, of your mean values of your operators are independent on the choice of their basis, okay, this uh, will be reflected at the level of the colonomies which appear here, which parameterize the state, precisely in the way the gauge transformation do. So uh, our conjecture that we push for in the paper is that the gauge field might be considered as a kind of continuous approximation to the discrete quantum system. So this all also indicates that, you know, um, having a given condensed matter system, many body quantum system, we, we, we ask, what might be the affective descriptions of the given quantum, many body quantum systems, okay? And for some, there are, let's say, Majorana spinners as of ineffective modes. For some, there, there are scalar degrees of freedom. We claim, okay, or uh, hypothesize based on that analysis that if your state of your system is described by maximal entangled pars, okay, there is, uh, there is a chance that the, that the effective description might be in terms of the gauge fields, okay? And then we, we did quite a lot of more things, actually, in this context. But let me, if I, I have, I think, five more minutes? Uh, you're eating up on your question. Okay, okay. So th let me come back right now to the spin network. So, and this is actually beyond the paper, okay? So, uh, now knowing that maximally entangled part can be related with the colonomy in, in this particular way, okay, you may say that if you have a spin network, you can consider states of a, of a spin network, okay, uh, such that your links will be attributed with this 
epsilon L states, which are just the state associated with the colonomies. And then you consider a tensor product of the states over the all links of your, of your, of your, um, of your uh, spin network. But however, of course, you have to satisfy Gauss constraint. Therefore, you have to, you have to project this product state onto the surface of the Gauss constraint. I call this maximal entangled spin network. And this is, I would very like to understand what is the relation to the Bell states, which were introduced by Pietro Donna in, in the first day of the conference. And actually, an example of the states is something what we considered in the context of quantum simulations. Namely, you can consider the maximally entangled states to be just the singlets, okay? And then you can, uh, for instance, this is a circuit which we implemented on emulators and partially also on, on real quantum computers. This is, this, is a, this is a circuit which actually allows you to compute projection of, um, of, of, of the spin network state for, for the pentagram uh, uh, spin network with the, all the spin labels corresponding to the fundamental representation onto the uh, onto the spin network basis state, which is a product state, okay? And in the case of this projection, this projection, you don't have to actually explicitly use this projection on, on the Gauss constraint. So th this is one thing you can do. Another thing that you can do is because of this relation, you can inverse the problem and you can extract Hij from the state just by projecting the state on the basis state. So you can say that Hij can always be related with this psi state. And based on that, every Wilson loop is just, uh, you know, the trace of that. And every uh, Wilson loop can be expressed in terms of this state, okay? This is kind of reformulating things in terms of this maximally entangled state psi. And in, we know that in loop quantum gravity from the other side, okay, spin network states, can be the, I mean, using the recoupling theory of S2, can be decomposed in, 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 and expressed in terms of the products and superposition of Wilson loops, okay? So this any spin network state can be written using the, the size, okay? I don't know what the consequences are. This is something very new, okay? Um, but uh, this is possible. There's also relation to, I mean, the relation with the tensor network and spin networks is becoming much clearer right now. And actually, this kind of regular spin networks, we can perceive just as a tensor network. Actually, there is one-to-one -one correspondence between this kind of regular Ising type maximally entangled spin network, okay, in which every par, every two nodes are associated with a psi state, okay? This is like, this is PEPS um, project and entangled per state. This is something that is very well known in many body quantum physics, okay? So it, it's, it seems that there is very tight connection between, uh, between the both um, based on that. Okay, so this is basically all I wanted to say. Okay. Um, so this is not really a question, it's more like a motivational comment or an advertisement. So I like it a lot in this talk, the fact that uh, this is one of the areas where one can kind of see where the intersection of, um, of the, 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 the things that people are interested in quantum gravity and the tools that have been used in quantum information can play a role mm -hmm. and we can have a kind of a value of, out of this collaboration coming out that is kind of unique to this mm -hmm. space. So, so in a sense, what was crucial at the mathematical level here was this correspondence between um, unitary gates and maximally entangled states. Mm. which is a very fundamental thing in quantum information, mm -hmm. it's been used a lot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And there is all a framework for dealing this, with this that has been developed the uh, past 15 years. Huh? And also the framework of cate a categorical mm -hmm. quantum mechanics mm -hmm. is pretty starts from this. Mm -hmm. This thing that you can move uh, operations around the maximum entangled state and transpose them and have all these, these kind of things that you are doing there. So I think th all these things is something that we should find the time to discuss. Yeah, because it's really, yeah. really, um, uh, so in, in, in the hyperspace framework has been uh, sometimes called the, the double cat notation where you put uh, an operator mm -hmm. inside the double cat mm -hmm. and you mean what you do in that mm -hmm. way by using the, the matrix element of the operator mm -hmm. to define a state. And there is an whole algebra of things that you can do that makes all these things very efficient. 
And again, you said it categorically quantum mechanics. And I also wanted somehow to advertise that uh, the talks in this afternoon are all pretty much playing around this technique of uh, encoding the unitary yeah. gates. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, this thing of maximum entangled states and units is, is really the basic starting point, but there are a few things that people have been playing around, and in this sense, I would say, is a genuine connection, mm -hmm. and I do expect that it, through this project, we may get some genuine value that comes from this unique combination of experts. I'm pretty new in the quantum information, you know, um, community, yeah. okay? I'm, I'm from quantum gravity, quantum cosmology, and classical cosmology side, yeah. rather, okay? So I'm just going to this direction. I'm so, so I don't know everything, you know, about from this. From my point of view, it seems that we have a hammer, we have all these tools, yeah. but I wouldn't be able to apply them mm -hmm. to the stuff we have mm -hmm. been doing. So that's like why I find excited, because mm -hmm. it's kind of a unique opportunity mm -hmm. that we have of discussing this thing. Okay. So, yeah, that's what we hope. Marco. Okay, so, so um, it's very interesting, this, but... Uh, um, <coughs> When you when you talk about gauge theories, basically the the, the, the non-trivial part of gauge theories is when the, when you make a loop with the holonomy, uh, you do not get an identity. Right? So, so the notion of curvature comes yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, and, and somehow in within this framework, when you have a, a, a Hilbert, two Hilbert spaces, um, and you, you you define a holonomy from one to the other, what happens when you go back? I mean, do, 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 you, can you introduce the notion of curvature from, from this point of view? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, but you have to go using a, another way back, okay? Yeah, but how do you define another way? What, what, what does it mean to, to go? I mean, you... If you just a map from one Hilbert space to another. Uh, you, so uh, how but do you define the trajectory? In but the being space? attached to the, to the viewpoint of states purely or using the ge actually the <laughs> ge geometrical picture using the geometrical picture you 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 have an, an another curve along which you integrate okay you go back okay from the viewpoint of poorly um, a quantum side this means that you have another um, matrix elements okay so you basically have two different states and then you perform maps through through two different states which are do I still have my slides here uh, so, uh, I mean, from the viewpoint of the map, actually, uh, this means that we have a certain, certain state. Let's say that we have, uh, to, to make things simpler, we have a square, OK? So you, we can go further. We can have four different points, OK? We can go, this is something actually what we usually did in loop quantum gravity. We, we make a, a square and then shrink it, I mean, to, to recover the, the classical curvature of the connection, OK? Uh, but here, it means that you have a four different states associated with the four links, which are four different um, matrices associated with this, with, with this. So, I mean, from the viewpoint of, uh, poorly quantum informational side, uh, there is, I don't see a geometric interpretation of that, at least for the moment, but from the viewpoint of, uh, you know, the, the original picture of colonomy, this is something natural that you end up with, 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 with a From the point of view of colonomy, but uh, it is not obvious what, what it maps to in the context of, of the human space. So you, um, that is why I'm asking. What, what so you're asking basically just to understand you, uh, Mm, correctly, you are asking. I mean, what would be inter interpretation of curvature? Yes, context in the poorly quantum context here. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I'm not a politician. I cannot answer directly to any question. Okay, I would have to think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so is this uh, special to SU2 or um, so let's go to um, some gauge theory SU3, um, do you still have a Yeah, so in, in for, SU, for SU3, I mean, looks, I mean, we have, we, we didn't analyze uh, in details the, the, the higher, um, I mean, the, the different colors, okay? Uh, I mean, for SU2, for, for, <coughs> any fundament, for any representation, it works. For SU3, okay, you basically deal with a 3 by 3 matrix. So you actually uh, 
playing in the fundamental representation of SU3, you are playing with kutrits. These are kutrits, actually. Sure. So, uh, and, and then uh, perhaps, but we didn't uh, analyze the, 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 the any higher representation for. for for well, I mean, for if this is special to SC2, and then maybe that's just a coincidence that you have this uh, kind of <coughs> identification that you propose between uh, maximum entanglement and base theory. So I don't know, but, 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 um, but that would be, I mean, well, from one side, I would say, I, I don't know whether I should be happy or n unhappy with this, because that says, okay, that, you know, gravity can be expressed in terms of not SU4, not SU5, but in terms of SU2, okay? So it means that for gravity, you can apply this, and then you have a relation between the gravity and the entanglement, but you don't have it for other kind of higher color types of gauge field theories, okay? So that would select, I would say, but we didn't check that yet, okay? We, we were focused on SU2, and very preliminarily, we checked fundamental representation, ba basically, the Gelman matrices for for uh, for SU three, okay, and this relation with Kutrits, but uh, I cannot say anything more than that for the moment. Yeah, I'm trying to understand the physical content of the conjecture in the end. Uh, so apparently, it's uh, you, you all for now the conjecture only. You mean this one, or yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for now the conjecture only concerns gravity, and you're not sure whether it's extendable to other gauge field theory. But this is, I mean, this is not really attached to gravity, okay? This, this, oh, this, more says, general this, is, this says that if you have, the conjecture actually should be specified to SU2, okay? There should be SU2 here, okay? okay. That if you have maximally entangled pairs, I mean, your quantum state of your many-body quantum system can be built out of the maximally entangled states, then, it looks like, I mean, uh, there is uh, actually chance based on this, there's a hypothesis, okay, that it might have but effective description in terms of the gauge. But you're saying that the gauge field would correspond to the coefficients of the entanglement, but it would be an entanglement between what? For instance, <coughs> if my gauge field is photon, it's an entanglement between f charged particles? Or what would be the analogy? No, that, that would be, uh, that, 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 that would be, I mean, I would say the, the true degrees of freedom for the field, okay? Let's say that, you know, you have, let's say, um, atoms in the lattice, okay, which are true degrees of freedom. Let's say you have spins, but then you have a magnons, okay? And the magnons are w spin waves, okay? which are not true degrees of freedom, not UV, field, not UV degrees of freedom, and they have a certain Lagrange, Lagrange and Camelton function, okay, which is of the completely different type, okay, which might have description in terms of I don't know um, spinners and, and all that part. But in case in gra of gravity, it's an entanglement between space-time points. In case of gravity, yeah. this is precisely entanglement between the intertwiners, okay. So in my in the in the case that I consider the rafter. Okay, for instance, the, in, the, in the case of this spin network, which is actually reduced because I fixed here the spin labels to correspond to fundamental representation, the only degrees of freedom are the intertwiners. You see that they are two-dimensional Hilbert spaces at the, at the intertwiners, okay? Um, so, so actually, the, degrees, the, the physical degrees of freedom which remain at the end are, are, are those at the, at the nodes. And do you have in mind any analogy with the uh, ER equal EPR thing? I mean, this is actually, uh, if, you, if you take a look from the viewpoint of the boundary okay. um, approach to, to, to amplitudes, this is basically the, um, the, the, the boundary of the, of the vertex in spin forms, EPRL. Uh, no, I was, I was referring sorry, to the conjecture of Madlasena about the entanglement is... Uh, sorry, so I missed I mean, the class. I, I, I misunderstood the question. Like, uh, I, I was referring to Soskin conjecture. Oh, Soskin, Soskin mm -hmm. conjecture. Oh. You know, so, <laughs> so this is actually related to that. Uh, so this is actually related to that, okay? Because the 
this is actually what you're asking about, and the EPR um, uh, and correspondence to to the uh, to the to the breach. Okay, is basically uh, the relation between the entanglement and gravity. Okay, and in this case, this is a basically entanglement structure, and this is. This is gravity side, okay? So from this viewpoint, okay, we have a support to the claim that actually what the spin networks do is that they describe the bulk, okay? And the open links are the degrees of freedom, okay, which are entangled through the, through the spin network, okay? That's, the, I would say, the current viewpoint on, on that, okay? This is still not very concrete, okay? And not fully, I, mean, I would say, proven, but this is at least seem to be um, a, a possible interpretation. Um, can I also ask you something? Yeah. So I'm trying to, to get my head around what is um, your idea. I see that you're suspecting something, but so, how to say? <coughs> you are putting together ideas. It's not really something new, right? I mean Which one? Well, I mean the the fact that holonomy behaves like that is like that. Uh, I mean, usually, I mean the, the concentric holonomy in gravity. I mean, uh, there is a correspondence between the um, yeah, as you two and the maximally entangled states. Then you put together the idea. And that, 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 that is new. That is new. Actually, the fact that colonomies are associated with the maximal entangled state, this is something new. Okay. Well, colonomies, uh, in the sense that you put this idea that they have to hit the spaces at two links, uh, and then if I do transformations of the source and the target, and I think of this as being uh, the basis uh, from where I create the bed state, that's somehow how you put this together. Right? I mean, as Julia was saying, is. Mm -hmm. It's not the correspondence between like, some the entangled states and SU2. Um, I mean, the fact that SU2 matrices are used to, to define the state, this is something what has been known in, in mathematics. That's okay? what I'm yeah, what is So this is, this is something what, um, I mean, uh, let, let me go to, to, the, to the concrete slide. This is some. This is something what has been known and is what was used in quantum information community, mm -hmm. but it has not been uh, actually discussed that this HIJ actually transforms <coughs> under the change of basis as a colonum. Okay, there was no actually in the literature as far as I explore the literature and I ask people. that follows from the fact that you're taking one as source and the other as target. And the thing is, in the middle is it, it says you too, so that's what's going to happen. I know you're all views. It's like LOCT in some sense. Yes, so somehow I think... And the one the more thing, I mean, usually, I mean, in quantum information community, this is not really distinguished that these are two different Hilbert spaces. This is crucial. Okay. That's right. I think that's putting yeah. together the yeah. ideas. So, and usually you say that you have a flat space time, okay, and this Hilbert space and this one is the same, okay? There's no difference between them, actually. And here we distinguish really between, because these are two different Hilbert spaces, because they are yeah. at two different space points, okay? Yeah, but that's why I was asking yeah. you just thinking about them. So, okay, so is it fair to say that you're, it's an observation, it's basically saying that look, if I put subscripts to these kids, source and target, then I can understand And this then if you say that they are at two different points, okay, okay, you can say that there is a map because these are two different Hilbert spaces. And then we have shown that this is actually giving the the map which is which has transformation properties of the colonomy. Okay? Okay. So that was something we glue together. We synthesize things. Okay, we synthesize things. Okay, our different 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 things, and uh, and try to make a consistent picture actually of what's going on. Um, let's uh, let's uh, let's yeah. speak again.